This video will present solutions to the VCE 2022 Mathematical Methods Written Examination 2, Section A, Questions 6 to 10. Question 6. This question asks which of the five options are not pairs of inverse functions. Looking first at the rules for each pair, it seems like all the rules are those of inverse functions. This can be seen by transposing f of x and x and rearranging. In the case of b, for example, this process yields 3 over 2 multiplied by x take 2, which is equivalent to the rule given for g of x. So b is all good and not our answer. This process can also be implemented using a class pad. I'm going to do this to find the inverse of f of x in option e. The most efficient way to do this is to enter the function in the main app, with the switching of variables already done and using y in place of f of x. Y can then be made the subject of this equation by accessing the interactive equation menu and using the solve command to solve for Y. E looks good too. So, if the rules all seem to be inverses, then this must be a question about domain. A question that raises its ugly head in particular when thinking about option C. The transposing process for X squared leads to plus or minus square root X. So the inverse will either be a positive or a negative square root, depending on the domain of the original function. So which is it? A quick sketch of f of x with the given domain of x less than 0 looks like this. Its inverse will be this shape reflected through the line y equals x, and so will look like this. But g of x looks like this. So the inverse of f of x would have to be the negative square root of x, and so the functions in option C are not inverses, and so this is our answer. Another possible approach to this question, which will not be demonstrated here, would be to graph each of these pairs of functions in the graph and table app, and observe which pairs are not reflections through the line y equals x. Question 7. This question asks which of the five graphs provided could represent y equals f dashed, based on the graph of y equals f of x that has been provided. My approach to these sorts of questions is to identify features of the graph of y equals f of x that tell us about the graph of y equals f dashed, and then use these features to rule options in or out. The easiest of these features to use are the stationary points of f of x, as these will correspond to the roots of f dashed. These two stationary points tell us that y equals f of x will have two roots, which eliminates options A, C and D. This leaves us with options B and E. B and E are very similar looking curves. The feature that will help determine which of these curves is our answer is the non-stationary inflection point that lies between the two stationary points on the graph of y equals f of x. This non-stationary point on y equals f of x corresponds to a local maximum or a local minimum on the graph of y equals f dashed. Unfortunately, both b and e exhibit such a point, a maximum in the case of b and a minimum in the case of e. So which is it? Well, the inflection point on the graph of y equals f of x is the point of steepest negative gradient. Based on this, the gradient function for f dashed x is at a minimum, not a maximum, at that x value, and so the answer is e. Question 8. This question gives us information about the definite integral of f of x over the interval from 0 to b, which is equal to 10, and then focuses on this interval split into 2, from 0 to a, and from a to b. This splitting of the interval suggests that this property of definite integrals will be useful. After substituting in the values that we are given, with a little rearranging, this relationship tells us that the integral from a to b of f of x is equal to 10 take minus 4, which is 14, and so the answer is e. Question 9. This question asks for the shortest distance between the origin and a point on a function x, y, i.e. the distance between the points 0, 0 and x, root 2x plus 1. An expression for this distance can be found on a class pad 
by applying the distance formula to these points. In the main app, enter this as the square root of x minus 0, all squared, plus the root of 2x plus 1, minus 0, all squared. The class pad simplifies this to the modulus of x plus 1. As x is positive in this question, this is equivalent to answer D. As the distance formula is commonly used, I have created a user-defined function that I can use to answer this question. Whilst the exam is no place to create such user content, if a user-defined function was already in place, I would locate it in the catalog menu, which is found by tapping the down arrow on the bottom left of the keyboard. To see only user-defined functions, tap the formula drop-down arrow and choose user. Tap the function required, in this case dist, and tap input. This function has been defined to operate on four inputs, being the coordinates of the two points under consideration. These are separated by a comma. If this style of solution suits you, and you don't have this user-defined function, a video showing how to create this and other functions is part of this resource collection. A third approach is to tackle this question without any use of CAS. Given the relative simplicity of the function, the algebra works out quite cleanly. The distance formula generates the square root of this quadratic, which is a perfect square, meaning that we can take its square root, leading to the x plus 1 result. Question 10. This question calls for the calculation of a 95% confidence interval for a population proportion based on a sample of 1,000 with a sample proportion of 55%. This calculation can be done on ClassPad's Statistics app. From the Calculation menu, choose Interval. Select a one proportion Z interval and tap Next. Enter the confidence level as 0.95, the X value as 550, or just to be sure, 0.55 times 1,000, and enter N as 1,000. Tap Next to see the lower and upper bounds of the interval, which corresponds to answer D.